Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> um, cool. What's even better than generating leads? Closing them, no? <laughs> so uh, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce you to our next speaker. I'm Joe from Shopify, by the way, for those who don't know me or weren't here at uh, Parallel yesterday. Um, and yeah, a uh, pleasure of mine to introduce you to Shagun, or Segun in Spanish. <laughs> Floor is yours. Thank you. Perfect uh, pronunciation for once. <laughs> so today I'm going to touch on things like outside of the sales call that can help with closing more deals. So I didn't want to get too specific in looking at like things in the call like the frame, objection handling or things like that. So we're going to look at systems, hiring, operations and how that actually feeds into helping make the sales call easier and to increase the close rate. So yeah, we'll be looking at scaling systems, how to build high performance sales processes and how that will help you close more deals. Um, so who are we? So my name is Shigun Dile and we have a business remote closing club which I'm co-founder of and that's kind of related to training and placement of sales reps into online businesses. And then we have another arm, uh, Sales Grow Partners, where we help coaches, consultants, and agencies grow by helping them with staffing, managing their sales processes, implementing systems, and helping with training. So I'm joined by my co-founder there, Alex O'Brien. There's another one of us, Keen Lennon, um, who lives in London. Uh, so it's an Irish, predominantly Irish-run agency. And fortunately, the two guys uh, look a lot more Irish than I do. Um, so yeah, who do we help? So we work with, I suppose, agencies and business owners who are predominantly um, referral based. So these are like owners and businesses who kind of struggle to scale beyond word of mouth. Um, and typically these are the same owners that become bottlenecks inside their business because of messy systems, unorganized data, um, and as well, maybe they're trapped still taking their own sales calls, right? They don't know their metrics, they don't track, as Nathan alluded to earlier, you need to have data, you need to be able to track all of this. So here we have um, just like a, an average sales agency's process, and if we start at the left, you can see the traffic coming in, and then as we progress through the stages, what happens is there's opportunities here for inefficiencies and leaks to creep in, and then this will ultimately result in a loss of opportunities and a loss of revenue. So, and a solution to this really is by having highly trained sales teams, by having good tracking, um, and being able to have systems that automate everything. So a lot of businesses, a lot of agencies will have leakages in their systems, right? And this can tend to happen when there's miscommunication between sales and marketing. So there's like a lack of synchronization. And of course, I'm going to touch on things we can do to help improve that. So number one is sales reps. So why do we need good sales reps? A good sales rep can literally either double or half your business growth, right? And if you have a good sales rep, of course you're going to be able to improve revenue. But then as a business owner, what it also does is it buys back your time. So it allows you to focus on other things, maybe fulfillment, expanding marketing efforts, things that is going to feed in and lead to improving LTV. Um, and then also you, have, you kind of have to look at the switch of being able to stop working inside your business and now being able to work on your business because you have that time back. Where do I find them? Uh, of course I know trying to find good sales reps can definitely feel like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but you can make it super simple. So you can build out a funnel, create a VSL, a video sales letter, and in that basically just be able to communicate the job spec, the expectations of the role, um, and then you cast a wide net spread it across multiple platforms, such as LinkedIn, Indeed, you can even have it on social media as well. Um, and then what that VSL will do is it will allow you to kind of refine the applicants and make it a smaller pile of more highly qualified candidates. How do I vet them then? So in terms of looking at vetting, there's multiple ways you can do this. So a simple thing we use is like a 90 second Loom video where that will allow you to assess their communication abilities 
And as well as that, you know, if, if you're putting in the spec that the Loom video needs to be, let's say, 90 seconds or shorter, someone sends you a Loom video above 90 seconds, for us that's an automatic disqualification because it's the first chance they've showed you they can't follow simple instructions. Um, in addition to that as well, we also have built out a type form which has additional questions, allows you to further, I guess, um, narrow in the bunch. Um, and then you could then go on to the next stage of having like a screening process which will allow you to look at culture fit, assess sharpness um, and competence as well. So in terms of onboarding, so once you have a good rep in the door, onboarding is really important, but again, it can just set them up for success. So simple things like using Monday, using Notion, being able to, um, I guess, make it as easy as them to start well. So having like an SOP house, having your contracts embedded, having call recordings where they can watch back on deals. They can look at call recordings that have dealt with um, different types of objections that have come up in the calls as well. Um, and just making it really, really automated so that every time you bring in a new sales rep, there's no mental drag. It's, it's all automated. They go in, they watch the videos, they progress the contracts, they know their KPIs, they know their daily workflows, um, and then they're going to be able to start quicker and better. In terms of tracking performance as well, so this doesn't need to be super complicated. You can make it really, really simple. For example, things like having a Google Doc or Google Sheets. So what we've done is we have a Google Sheets um, and Google Doc, and then this feeds into a larger database. So every day after each call, there's like a post-call form, and then we also have end-of-date forms as well. And it feeds into a larger Google Sheet and allows us to track metrics such as offer rate, show rate, close rate, cash per call, revenue per call, right? All key metrics that will allow you to know where to double down and, and where to focus your efforts. Um, and then this can be kind of brought into marketing and can be also brought into pre-call automations as well. So part two then is systems and automations, a lever that everyone should be pulling. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in terms of looking at systems and automations, right, it, unlike humans, systems, auto operations, automations, AI, it doesn't need a break, right? You'll never hear uh, an automation ask for a time off to go to a wedding or for holidays or anything like that. It literally works 24 seven. And you should be really doubling down in this to help you improve your processes. So tools that can uh, help automate, so Zapier and Make, these are the glues that basically hold the business together. It allows all forms of systems, all forms of processes to be communicating together and um, to be synchronized. Um, and it just makes the whole flow a lot easier. Then in terms of cold email, as Nathan touched on as well, everyone should be doing cold email. And this is an infrastructure we built out to allow us to send personalized emails at volume. So we have Instantly and we have Smart Lead, which allows us to send the emails. Then you have the likes of Apollo, which allows you to get lead data. And then you have Clay, which um, is an enrichment tool to improve the health of these emails. Then in terms of reporting, again, this is all automated, so it still gives you time to focus on other tasks, but you want to be able to jump in and quickly be able to see the number of emails sending, what the open rate is like, positive response rate, bounce rate, campaign performance, um, and then it allows you to quickly iterate and improve, um, whether it's the subject line, whether it's the opening line, things like that. <laughs> so by um, leveraging this technology, you're able to target, uh, to, we're able to target over 20,000 leads per month, and it's an average cost of about $500 per month. So as you can see, it's really, really cost effective and delivers high ROI. In terms then of social proof, so the whole point of being able to acquire a client should be to get results that will allow you to attract more clients. So this is uh, underrated. It's, it's not used to its full potential with a lot of the businesses we see as well. Um, so like, don't be afraid to get trust pilot reviews. Don't be afraid to ask a client for a 60 second video testimonial when something has gone right. And don't be afraid to build out um, educational case studies. Don't be afraid to um, even have like in-depth interviews as well for 30 minutes. Use it across multiple platforms. YouTube, LinkedIn, and um, wherever you're present. 
Um, for example, with us then, uh, and this goes back to the data collection, so in the post-call notes, um, at the end of each month, at the end of each quarter, we're able to holistically see all the data we're capturing in the sales calls. From that then, what I was able to do was I was able to see kind of recurring questions. I built out an FAQ doc, which has a list of all the questions we're getting in the sales calls. I answered all the questions, and then I recorded a simple Loom video, which just simplifies all the questions, answers them. And then we built this into our pre-call automations where two days before each sales call, every prospect receives this FAQ doc and video. And what that does then is it allows you to pre-frame the sales call that this is an action taker's call, not a Q&A. Um, so they're jumping onto the call. A lot of the questions they might have had coming into the call has already been answered. And then you're able to get into the nitty gritty. You're able to get more kind of action orientated. Um, and that's a simple thing you guys should be doing. You should be able to see what keeps recurring in the calls, what you can do to pre-handle objections because it means then that in the actual sales call, it's not about having the skill to like handle that financial objection or handle the objections. These can be pre-handled and then your close rate is gonna increase and the sales call is gonna be a lot more fruitful. So it's just the positive feedback loop where you get results, you market the results, you do your sales call, you pre-handle objections. Yeah, so this should be seen kind of throughout the entire sales process where you're sharing testimonials, you're sharing your wins everywhere from the thank you page to the pre-call workflows um, and just market the shit out of it everywhere because it will make your life easier. So for example, like imagine you're speaking to a potential brand you want to work with and they're struggling with a specific problem. Imagine before the call, you're able to send them an example of you solving that problem or a similar problem with a similar brand they know you're going to have the expertise to be able to take care of that. And it'll just make sure that the sales cycle doesn't go from a couple of weeks or months to maybe even a week to get the deal closed. Data is the new goal. So everything you should be doing should be related to data, as, as Nathan mentioned earlier as well. So there shouldn't be kind of any guesswork, any wondering whether we should do this, we should do that, or, or what should we do. You go where it makes sense, and you double down on that because it allows you to have predictability in, in your revenue generation process. So key metrics you should be looking at here, you should be looking at lead source, so where are the majority of your leads coming from? Are they coming from LinkedIn? Are they coming from organic socials? Are they coming from cold email? Um, what's the engagement activity like? What are your show rates like? What are your close rates like? What's the cash per call? And why should you look at this? So I'm not gonna run through everything here, but again, it'll just allow you to increase efficiency improve your client acquisition, it adds predictability into the scaling process, it means your sales teams are gonna perform better, which means the overall team will perform better, it'll show you kind of where to double down on marketing spend, and as I alluded to earlier as well, it can just narrow in that sales cycle, um, because you wanna be able to strike while the iron is hot, and be able to get these potential brands, potential clients, where the pain is really there, and, and capture them. So here's another example of how we were able to implement uh, data. So a really, really simple example. Imagine you have two sales reps, sales rep A, sales rep B, and that they're selling uh, an e-com package for $15,000, right? And we see that sales rep A is collecting $3,000 left, less than sales rep B. So we look into the data, we look at the post-call uh, form, we see that sales rep A keeps mentioning how the financial objection is resulting in less deals being closed. Um, so we get sales rep A to watch the call recordings of sales rep B, and they see that sales rep B is temp checking before he price drops. So he's finding out on a scale of one to 10, where are they at with the processes. They say they're at an eight out of 10. He doubles down, he asks them why. They say all the good reasons and, and, and why they think that it'll be potentially able to help their brand. And then he looks for the gap. So what is causing them to be not 10 out of 10? Once he identifies that, he handles the objection. Then and only then does he price drop when they're at a 10 out of 10. And that is why he's been able to collect more cash. Sales rep A then takes what sales rep B in, uh, did into consideration. He adds that into his script and adds that before price dropping and then he's able to increase his cash collected. So a really super simple example, but it all goes back to 
recording calls, having the post-call forms, seeing the data, and then iterating that into the process. So just to kind of wrap up, um, I know it's a, a different approach, but just wanted to look at how it's not just about the sales call and what's going on in the call, but how having organized systems, being able to collect the data, analyze the data, iterate it, train good sales teams, have good um, onboarding built out, will allow you to leverage tech, allow you to make better sales decisions, and allow your process to help you make more money and sign more clients. So if you want to learn more, uh, we have a couple of sales resources, assets, playbooks that we're able to share. So you can just scan the QR code, and put in your email address, and we'll get that sent over. Thank you. So I want to give a shout out to Rachel. Thank you for having us up here. Thank you for listening, and uh, hope it was helpful. <laughs>